Thank you for joining us here for another Geek Network interview. Today, we have Leanne with us, and she's going to be going over some very cool things that she's been up to. Hi, Leanne. Hey. Hey, Jesse. How are you doing? We are great. doing great. Um, but yes, uh, the person that just interrupted Jesse is Thomas. Uh, you guys know <laughs> me from Geek Network. Um, I'm the guy that does all the grunt work. Um, Jesse is... What, what, what would you call yourself? You'd be Just like Alfred, right? <laughs> I think I would I would be Batman and you're Alfred because I, I think low-key Alfred is the boss, even though he <laughs> he very, uh, you know, smartly calls himself the butler, but he he pretty much makes Batman do whatever he wants. And that's probably a, a hot take that people would disagree with, but that's okay. I'm very um, okay with but, that. Yeah, <laughs> everybody loves Alfred, especially after Michael Caine played him. That that hit me on a level um, in the Nolan trilogy that I I don't think I've ever had love for Alfred in the, in in any way, or for another man in that matter. <laughs> um, but we're not here to talk about me and my my secrets. Um, Leanne, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah. Um... So I'm a speculative fiction and comic writer and a poet. Uh, I write, so as a speculative fiction comics writer, I write under L. Kane and Gino. And as a poet, I write under Leanne Kathleen and Gino, just to kind of keep them a little bit separate um, since I, I try to do too much sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just, I love writing uh, fairy tales, myths, dark, uh, you know, kind of kind of dark stuff, not like super gritty, like, you know, no squid game, which I haven't watched because I don't think I can handle it. But um yeah, a little, little, little bit of dark in, in some of my stuff. And I, I, like, nine out of ten times, I have to infuse some sort of humor into it. I just, I, like, can't stop, <laughs> stop myself from doing it most of the time. They, they go hand in hand, you know. It's they like, do. yeah. It's like you say, you know, you, you start going too dark. And, you know, you got to get that little breath of humor in there just right. to let the reader kind of <laughs> come back and let everybody know it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let me ask you, what what came first? Um, were, were poetry the first type of writing you started doing, or? Yeah, I would say poetry because I've been writing poetry since I was a teenager. And um, I'm I'm gonna word this wrong, but there's like some meme that was like the ghost come back to haunt you, but it reads all your poems from when you were 16. And I'm like, oh yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> let's not let's not have that happen. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, is that so you started I'm assuming writing poetry in high school was it something yeah. that you kind of fell into or um, was it like a class you took how, how did that come about um I think it's something I a lot of people around that age do I mean, maybe not everybody but a lot of people kind of you know you get into that, like diary writing and whatnot um and then senior year I did have a teacher who really encouraged that and I I'm like part of me is like surprised because I'm like wow my stuff wasn't that good but thanks because <laughs> it's definitely grown <laughs> from there and I don't think it would have without that encouragement um and so I mean I've always been interested in some sort of writing but comics I never really thought about writing comics until a couple of years ago I like, yeah. I like reading them I started reading in like kind of late college I started with manga and then I moved on to comics like no it was after college, it was post -college. <laughs> you're you're speaking Jesse's language he, he's a huge manga reader and I mean you definitely don't have to feel bad I barely started reading comics about two to three years ago so yeah. um I got a really late start too but uh, I asked how you got started into poetry because I also write poetry nice. but I actually started as uh like a coping mechanism I guess you could call mm -hmm. it yeah. with uh, my mental health um it was something that was suggested to me and yeah, um, I, I probably still write like a 16 year old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably the poetry they'll be reading to me. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's healthy. Um, yeah. For whatever reason that you do it, you know, it's a really good creative outlet. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of 16 year olds don't do it. But I feel like those that have that creative bug, um, definitely do kind of dabble with it mm -hmm. at one point or another. Either that or drama. I know Jesse was a, a drama kid uh, when I knew him in high school. But uh, what kind of manga did you jump into? I know Jesse will be curious about that. Um, uh, I missed myself. <laughs> yeah, I stopped. I, I mean, it's such an expensive hobby. I used to work at Borders, so I got a nice discount. 
obviously they went out of business and of course I didn't want to work there forever anyways I, I loved working there but you know mm -hmm. I didn't want to work retail um for life and so let's see what uh, clamp was one of my favorite groups artist groups um love paradise kiss um but I did it I I don't think I ever finished battle royale because I couldn't handle the art switching mm, okay. like that just drove me nutty <laughs> I watched <laughs> the movie but it's been like I don't know it's been a really long time since I watched it uh I really like dance and that's really dark um I don't know just a variety of stuff I I don't think I ever read Black Butler I think I have one volume and I don't think I've read it so it really kind of runs the gamut though of what I've checked out in that in that area you know drama um and whatnot where i would say like if i'm reading a fiction book i'm usually reading sci-fi or fantasy um or poetry uh, but if sometimes uh, a mainstream novel and yeah occasionally, occasionally like a throw throwaway mystery you know one of those really quick books because it's just fun and you can like <laughs> it and then you're done <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great escape yeah um but manga i would say like i read more you know I, and they have a lot of teen drama so maybe that's part of why i read it because a lot of it has that okay um uh, well i'm not a big manga reader um i think i've read maybe one in my entire lifetime and it's for a very stupid reason because <laughs> i i hate having to read the the manga backwards yeah it, it's something that it, it just doesn't vibe with me and it's I it's maddening to me that they make me do that like they oh. they should come they should come in both options <laughs> um but yeah it definitely is an expensive habit um mm -hmm. just from going to you know local shops and seeing you know how many volumes especially if you yeah. want to get a get into one that's been going on for a while um it's gonna cost you a pretty they, penny at least they do end though exactly I, I, I yep. sometimes yeah <laughs> sometimes okay there are there are a couple there are a couple yeah i think right now i just got caught up with uh a manga called hajime no ipo and i'm on chapter 1357 oh, holy cow oh man that's oh. insane how many pages <laughs> are roughly per chapter i would say roughly around 16 17 around there Jesus, that's insanity. I mean, kudos to them for being creative enough to be able to, you know, carry it that long. <laughs> but honestly, that's that's why I love indie comics. I mean, all the indie publishers, it's probably my favorite thing about them is that usually when somebody joins an indie publisher with a project, it's kind of mapped out from beginning to mm -hmm. end. It, it might be something that goes on for like 50, 60 issues, but um, it's definitely not something you get from like Marvel or or DC where Batman has been fighting crime for hundreds of years now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I yeah, I I definitely love that aspect of that indie comics brings. It's just I just feel like everybody kind of has that yeah. the story they want to tell already. Um, but I totally agree with you on the jobs as well. Um, I feel like the best the jobs with the best perks never pay well because I yeah. used to work <laughs> I used to work at a local movie theater and it's honestly the oh, yeah. best job I have ever had and I've never enjoyed working somewhere mm -hmm. more than I did there and like watching the movie the night before um, for free and like free passes and all that was great but mm -hmm. I mean it was necessary because I probably couldn't afford to go to the movies otherwise so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know speaking of uh, you know indie projects you we do have this thing going on nowadays called Kickstarter, and mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Um, it gives me, to me, normally the comic is rewarding enough. Um, I have stacks of comics, boxes of comics. I love collecting them. I love variants, I, reading them. Everything about them is just fantastic. But Kickstarter, you know, gives you that extra little punch. You know, it comes with rewards and you know, it kind of gives the creators the chance to kind of show you a little bit about themselves amongst the rewards, like kind of makes you guys, you know, think about, you know, what you love and, you know, what you like. Like I know Anjali, Anjali, excuse me, Bimani, um, who voices 
um, Symmetra on Overwatch. She just launched a Kickstarter. And one of her rewards is to play video games with her for an hour. Oh, wow. So, like, it, it's just, like, <laughs> silly stuff like that. But, like, it's so cool. And, like, the Kickstarter platform is, like, awesome. All the people that that I've talked to from Kickstarter, um, both creators and, you know, the people working at Kickstarter are just, like, the greatest people. And it just, like, like it creates a little community behind the book while, you know, the creators are trying to get it launched. Um, so, you know what has been your experience um is this going to be your first kickstart is there is there has there been other projects um i've been on i've been on anthologies but i haven't had to do any of the running of it just you know mm-hmm. try, try to promote it of course from my end um do a couple of interviews stuff like that but this will be my first time running it and i'm like i'm a very big planner so i planned a lot of stuff in advance um and of course life happens and you know whether or not you believe in it mercury's in retro i mean Mercury is in retrograde, whether or not you believe it affects anything, you know, it, that's up to you. But uh, anyway, stuff has been going wrong. <laughs> I I believe that I do not know enough about the world to say that I don't believe in it. <laughs> right. Um, I, you know, I, I see coincidences every time it happens, but, you know, coincidence, coincidences do not equal truth. Right. No, yeah. I mean, I respect all forms of faith and, you know, beliefs. So, um, I hear that a lot, you know, um, I don't know exactly what it typically means. So if you want to school me on it, by it's all means. It's usually just like, um, it affects communication and technology. Uh huh. So you might have more like tech errors going wrong or miscommunications and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. That is nowhere near what I thought it was, but. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, um, I'm trying to remember what it actually means, like what the planet's actually doing. It has something to do with the, the revolutions and um, that's where I can't remember. Um, because phys- physically something's happening in the way that mm-hmm. it's like a slowdown or where it's passing us, something like that, that I can't quite recall right now. No, hey, um, you're good. As um, astrologically, um, Metaphysically, it's it's like Mercury in communication. So that's why I like Sailor Moon, Sailor Mercury. She um, had a lot of, like she had that little like communication piece and stuff like that. Oh, all right. Oh, hey, hey, I learned something new. See, I mean, just that in itself <laughs> is more than enough for me. Um, but yeah, hey, if you believe it, I mean, it affects your energy and all that. So, I mean, that that's all you need to know is if you believe it, then it's your right. So. <laughs> Um, but let's talk about, um, your Kickstarter project. So, um, it being your first, I, I'm assuming, you know, like you said, you do a lot of pre-planning. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's scary. Um, oh my gosh, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've, I've talked to people that have launched their first project before. At one point I was considering doing it uh-huh. and, you know, just writing comics for me, um, it, it became very daunting, so mm-hmm. I, I kind of took a step back, but um, I totally admire anybody that can put a project together, so, you know, what you've done thus far um, is definitely admirable, so you should be really proud of yourself, yeah. um, but what's the, um, how did the idea of Fangs and Foul Play come about? So, I, um, my first short comic was in Russell, <sighs> Why I always trip over his last name, Russell Nolte's, uh, uh-huh. who is hard to spell too. And it kind of got me thinking. I was like, you know, I like I like writing these. They're um, even a longer comic is much quicker for me to write than not than a poem. But anyway, suffice it to say, I have not finished a novel yet for you know this reason, um, time. <laughs> 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 so I haven't done that yet. So I can definitely, you know, knock out some comics, either, you know, a full issue or a couple pages. Um, yeah, it, it takes me longer than a poem. I can write a couple poems a day if I'm having a good day. Kind of mm-hmm. depends on, you know, what time I have available. And also my poetry is very, like, dependent on my mood. Right, not, I can yeah. write it, whereas a comic, I can usually get myself into that place of writing, whether or not it's been, like, a good day or a bad day or whatever else is going on. Um, and so I was like, you know, this would be, this would be fun to, to do because I don't have a lot of time outside my day job. And of course, putting together the Kickstarter takes a ton of time. So I maybe yeah. thought of that, but oh well, <laughs> a, little, a little late. Um, 
so I was, it, it wouldn't come to me for the longest time. I was like, I don't know what to write though. I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. Like I have these ideas, but they just don't fit comics or like, I can't think of anything that's long term enough to be more than like an issue. And I was in bed at like, I don't know, 2, 3 a.m., which is of course when all the ideas come and you can't sleep. Right. <laughs> I just had this like picture of this cat controlling a person. And I was like, all right, that could be kind of fun. And then I, I let it, that's like kind of all I had. And so it took a little while from there to actually flesh it out. I had to really kind of just let it sit on the back burner for a while. And so the cover I have for issue one, um, was actually like kind of one of my first things that I, I thought of for this comic. <laughs> and is that kind of where number zero um, came about? Just kind of, you know, putting that idea together as you kind of, you know, built upon it? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I had this guy who was going to be um, enthralled to a vampire cat. And I was like, okay, so how do we, how do we get there? Um, and I don't think you always need to start at the beginning, but I really liked this beginning. So I, I did want to start with that beginning of how he becomes involved to Fang. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I, there's, there's obviously both of them have their own backstories, how, you know, Fang become a became a vampire and how Richard right. got to where he is. Um, so there's obviously, that's not like the beginning, beginning, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you get very, you just kind of get thrown in there. And I love yeah. it when they do that because, you know, raising questions is one of the things that brings you back for more. So um, mm -hmm. it, it was really interesting to kind of just get thrown in there and you're just as confused as um, I, Richard, right, is his name. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that it kind of adds to the atmosphere that you're trying to present and then yeah I mean you see a cat I mean he was cute innocent <laughs> enough and then he gives you the swirly eyes <laughs> and, and you don't know if it's real or not I mean this dude's been hanging out in a blizzard so you know for all all means and purposes he could very well just be having a nightmare but you know it, it raises a lot of questions and I mm -hmm. think that's the best thing you can do um, you know, when you're trying to pull an audience in, um, but, you know, do you have the entire story mapped out that you want to tell um, at this point, or is this something where, you know, with a Kickstarter, I'm, I'm sure some of it has to do with, you know, how well, you know, it performs, um, but. Right, um, so issue one is done, it's complete, mm -hmm. um, so really I'm going to Kickstarter just to get the printing funded. Um, and I'm trying to do a, I mean, to me, it's a large print run. I don't, you know, maybe for other people, it might be small, obviously for DC or Marvel, Marvel, it's like right. teeny tiny, infinitesimal, <laughs> but you know, it's a larger print run for me because I want to be able to go to the convention, um, and get it out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the art's all done. The issue's all done. Um, we're just like waiting on, uh, the final print file. Basically we're just doing final touches. So it's ready to go. Um, but as far as like the next issues the next volume uh i have a loose idea a loose like outline so i'm like okay this is going to happen in this issue and this is for for volume one i have the next couple of issues kind of semi mapped out and then volume two three and maybe four depending on how everything goes four would be the end like absolute top if it goes that far um mm -hmm. Honestly, uh, that's I have a really loose outline. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, that's perfect. I mean, for me, um, when it comes to comic series, I, I really like to see it run about four to five issues. Um, and then, you know, like with TV shows, I, I don't think anything should be going past eight episodes. Uh, it's, it's just a, a much better way to absorb, um, you know, everything. Unless you have a huge story to tell and you're building this, like, you know, humongous universe, then you know, obviously all of that comes into play, but um, I, I really love, um, you know, the story you're telling. It, it seems okay. very secluded and, <laughs> you know, it, is it all going to take place at the mansion or is there plans to like expand this? No, we do go into the town um, in issue one, uh, into Bloodville, and it is, a, it is a small town, so there's not a lot there. Um, it could go outside of that in the future. Like I said, it's a little bit a little bit loose, but I right. think that it's still going to 
overall focus within this um, this town, this city of Leadville. Yeah, I love the name. <laughs> it's it's very very <laughs> ominous. <laughs> um, so you know we're talking about this and and we're talking about Fang and all that. But um, let's for the listener um, who isn't familiar with the project, um, can you tell them um, you know what they can expect to get from Fangs and Foul Play, your elevator pitch, if you will. Oh yeah. Um... Okay. <laughs> All right, so Fangs and Foul Play is a comic about horror justice and an evil vampiric cat. And after days of running from the war front, Richard, a colonel who deserted the war due to, due to his conscience, finds himself in a new town, Bloodville, and is immediately enthralled as a servant to a vampiric cat, Fang. The evil sarcastic Fang forces Richard to feed him humans to feed on. Sorry, to, to find him humans to feed on. Poor Richard just can't get away from asking from villains asking him to do horrible things. I just feel very sad for him. <laughs> There's nothing right worse than life. getting <laughs> nothing worse than getting bullied by a cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it happens to me all the time. Vampiric night, or so. not. <laughs> I was gonna say it's funny because as I was reading it, I was like, that's just my cat. Like, right? <laughs> yeah. I and you know, that's the, that's like the best thing I think I've heard about this so far is everybody's like. This is my cat. This is like my cat. I'm like, oh, thank you. I, that, that makes me feel really like really good. I'm like, yep, yeah, okay. Nothing like connecting with your audience with yeah. their the version <laughs> of their evil cat. Right. I, um, I have a black cat, Mary, like Mary and Pippin, but he got um and, and X has Pippin, so oh. they are separated. Um and he just pissed me out. He will yell at you for dinner. Yeah. Um it's been a few years since I had a cat, but I, I used to have a cat. Her name was Godzilla. Oh. And, um, I, the first thing when I used when I got her, the first thing she used to do was just get on her back paws and like start swatting you. So I was like, oh, <laughs> her name's Godzilla. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, she was a jerk. And I think <laughs> all, all cats are a little sassy and have attitude. But I mean, then they become these sweet little fur balls. Right. And like, I love dogs. I, I'm a huge dog person, but dogs will love you regardless. Right. I mean, I'll, you got, I'll you gotta scold, work for your cat. Right. I'll scold my dog when he does something bad, and this dude will still wag his tail and come yeah. lay on my lap. But <laughs> if I get in an argument with my cat, she will hold it against me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you definitely have to earn their their love and it it's it's rewarding. I mean, I love it. So I definitely love stories with cats because I I just find them like really interesting creatures. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the art and you know the colors, everything. Um, it's um, the best way I could describe it. It, it kind of reminds me of Neil Gaiman's mythology series. You know the everything just like blends almost like mm -hmm. art, um, not a comic book art, but like almost like you're looking at a painting or something. Mm -hmm. So. I really dig it. Um, can you tell us about the team that's involved in Fangs and Foul Play and, you know, just how it's been to work with them? Yeah, so the um, the issue zero and the issue one have a different colorist, but I think they both did a really great job um, on the respective issues. Mm -hmm. And so all of my team, all of my art team is international in various places. So the um, for issue zero, it's Alex Gunther and Ilaria Fella, and I believe um, Brazil and Italy, respective, respectively. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got um, it. <laughs> yeah, so there's always a, a little bit of um, work with communication with when you're working internationally, but I think we we were able to kind of smooth out anything that you know maybe wasn't clear immediately I actually don't think it was it wasn't too too much we didn't come up against too many things that you know I had to find a different way to say it or, or something like that right so that was nice <laughs> actually um, yeah um as a writer um and I'm sorry I don't mean to cut you off oh, no just a, just a quick question that I'm curious about something I'd like to ask writers um as a writer what's your preference do you do you kind of like to guide the artist as to what you want to see um because you know you I, I know you have to like write out the scene mm -hmm. and the panels and all that but um do you like to have you know like a lot of control over the art or is it something where 
you know, you you kind of trust them and just let them do their thing. So it's kind of funny because like in life in general, I'm very like a little bit OCD. And so I <laughs> don't like like giving up stuff. It's really hard for me. And it's something I'm working on, um, especially learning to outsource more, especially <laughs> I'm like, I don't have time for anything anyway. So I have to trust that, you know, people can do what I outsource. Right. Um, but definitely with the script, I, I try not to give too much direction. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll outline the number of panels and even that will change sometimes. Um, if they think there's something better. And I, I would say like maybe eight out of 10 times, I'll agree with them and say, yeah, well, we'll go ahead with that. And every once in a while, then like, no, no, we're kidding. You know, we're just keeping <laughs> it the way, the way it was. Um, you know, like the cover for issue one, I had a very specific idea. So I, was, I wanted to go with that. Um, and then there's a custom, um, we're doing a mini print. Well, no, I'm sorry, it's not a mini print. It's like a whole print, like 11 by 17. Um, where it's got these different frames and you can get drawn into it and Fang is in it. And so I had to ask for a couple changes to that just because I needed to make sure that they were large enough for people to you know, basically want to do it and be drawn into it. So hopefully that will go, we'll, we'll see how it goes because it's a little bit different. Um, reward tier that I don't know if I've seen before. I, somebody might've done it. There's so many Kickstarters that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's awesome to see everybody kind of leaping into it. But yeah, as somebody yeah. that um, has a minor obsession with signing up for Kickstarter, yeah. <laughs> it can definitely be a problem. Yeah. Um, so I just to go back to the question, um, I do try to give them more artistic control, though. Every once in a while, I will be very specific about a theme if I'm like, this, this needs to play out this way. But otherwise, it, it, it almost feels like I'm cheating writing a comic script because it's so bare sometimes. I'm like, I didn't write much here. <laughs> but I, I do try to give them enough to go off of though. Cause that would right. be cruel, cruel to not give them enough to uh, come up with. Yeah, it's a, I feel like it's, I would imagine I should say, because I mean, obviously I've never had, have gone through that experience mm -hmm. but I, I would imagine it's a little give and take you know mm -hmm, um, yeah. since you're telling the story obviously you kind of want to give them something to inspire them um, to create their art and but at the same time I would definitely say you know it's that's what they're good at you know and you know they're they're part of the team for a reason so I definitely wouldn't want to kind of micromanage or anything like that but I it it definitely has to be harmonious, I would yeah. say. <laughs> so let me ask you this, since you you have a lot of, um, you know, you, you write many different forms of, mm -hmm. of projects and you seem to be, um, you know, you seem to enjoy a lot of forms of media. If, if you could only pick one, um, <laughs> what, what would be the one um, for the rest of your life well, it's the uh, one form of media that you would stick with. That's like cutting off an arm, but um, or yep. something. Like that. <laughs> I, I probably would have to say poetry just because it was my first thing, and it's it's like it feels so internal. Okay. But yeah. I don't think um, I don't think I could like not do it. Yeah, I can understand that. It's to me, um, you know, using it as like. A form of self therapy mm -hmm. when it wants to come out like yeah it feels like it has to even and you know it, it may not be something that I even flesh out or finish but you know whatever is in my mind I I kind of have to write it out and it's yeah. almost like you're like releasing something um so yeah I'm probably with you there um I I don't think I would be able to stay as sane as I am <laughs> if I didn't. Um, but let me ask the same question to you, Jesse. Um, if you can only take one form of media with you for the rest of your life, um, what are you taking with you? Like you... entertainment-wise? Entertainment-wise, yes, sir. I'm going to have to go with manga, man. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I just told you I'm like 1,300 chapters into one. Yeah. Imagine the other ones. One piece yeah. is still a thousand strong. 
Um, no, I mean, I totally respect that. So um, before we let you go, Leanne, I want you to tell everyone, one, where they can find you, and two, when and how they can find things. I'm sorry, uh, things and foul play. Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, so the best link for me is my link tree. So that's link. How link tree does this? Like link tr.ee slash headless gnomes.com. Kind of bitly, they do that weird little dot. Um, and yeah, and I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like it, like it at all. But uh, on most social media, you can also find me at Headless Gnome or at LK and Gino. Um, and then Fangs and Foul Play, the Kickstarter page, you can follow it now. Fangs and Foul Play dot com will will take you there, and then that'll that'll get changed to the live page on uh, the second. Awesome. That's going to be here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, you November got, 2nd, not December. Yeah, yeah November 2nd. <laughs> um, yeah, November 2nd. Um, I already put myself to be notified when it launches. Oh, thank you. So you, you, have, <laughs> you have a backer in me at the very least. Um, but hopefully everybody signs up for it. It looks like, um, you know, yeah, you definitely dance with, you know, the dark and the humor. It, it seems innocent enough, but I'm, I'm sure you're going to have some things to throw at us yeah. <laughs> that you quite can't reveal just yet. So, um, you know, if if getting to meet you is any indication of the work you put out, I mean, you have a fan in me for sure. So I really oh. appreciate the time. Thanks so much, Tom. No, thank you. Um, for us, if you need to find any of our content, our social media, please visit us at geek-network.com. And you will find literally everything we do there. That is our home. So um, be sure to check us out and be sure to pick up Fangs and Foul Play and all of their rewards, which I'm sure um, will, there will be plenty, I'm sure, um, yeah. <laughs> on November 2nd. Um, but thanks again, and everybody have a good night. Thanks. Speak responsibly.